This year marks the 20th anniversary of the trilateral cooperation among China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, known to many countries as South Korea. But relations among Asia's three giants are experiencing dynamic, complicated changes. To counter uncertainties, leaders of the three economies have agreed to accelerate negotiations to promote trade and investment. However, also dominating the agenda are the deadlocked talks between the United States and the DPRK. So what collective measures should be taken from the Asian trail instead of uh, unilateralism? Where is the Korean nuclear issue heading? And how to position this regional bloc in today's world? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the Beijing studio by Rong Ying, Vice President of the China Institute of International Studies, and Dr. Zhao Hai, Research Fellow at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. From Tokyo, by Yorizumi Watanabe, Professor Emeritus at Kyo University, and from Seoul, Anjun Lim, Associate Professor of the Division of International Studies at Kangju National University. That's our topic. This is a dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Welcome to Dialogue, gentlemen. Thank you. Merry Christmas, by the way. <laughs> Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. So the three major players in Northeast Asia have had, have had problems for years. So this trilateral summit meeting takes place against the broad background of the trade war and geopolitical rivalry between the United States and China. How difficult is it for Beijing to bring leaders of the two neighboring countries to Chengdu? And what do you think are the most important issues on the agenda, Mr. Rong? Twenty years later, as we are commemorating the uh, uh, 20th anniversary, and as the summit says, they have already adopted the outlook for next decade, planning for the next decade. I think what behind them, or the reason why these leaders come in together, is because they ha also have many issues they to deal with. I think first and foremost, of course, the background. I mean, the global context, as you said in your question, alluded in your question. But the secondly, I think the impo equally important issue is the nuclear issues, the denuclearization on the peninsula. And thirdly, I think, uh, which for me is equally important, is that the three countries all strongly feel that cooperation will bring more to them, to their own domestic agenda, political, economic, and diplomatic. So uh, all of them are clearly aware of the benefits of a win-win instead of a confrontational approach adopted by Washington at this moment. Uh, so do you see a clear thaw in the trilateral relationship in Northeast Asia, Dr. Zhao Hai? Uh, yes, I think there's a general trend toward more cooperation among uh, the three countries. I totally agree with uh, uh, Professor Rong Yin that, that uh, you know, historically there are problems among these uh, three countries. You, uh, you, can, you can name it, you know, territorial dispute, historical differences, uh, and also the factor of American intervention. Uh, but it, it depends on what's the priority. And right now, the top priority is to unite against unilateralism, against protectionism, and tightening cooperation among these countries so that they can uh, further their trade relations on top of the uh, you know, very close ties between them already existed. Uh, for the past 20 years, uh, even, you can extend that even longer for the past 50 years, even though there are problems here and there, the general economic cooperation is continued uh, uh, growing. As you, you, uh, as you can see that now uh, among three countries you have 720 billion U.S. dollars worth of trade. Uh, so in many uh, respects, uh, these uh, countries, you know, the leaders of these three countries must look at the bigger picture uh, that at this moment the global economy is slowing down and there are dangers of uncertainty. Uh, the three must stand together against this trend so that they can benefit from the cooperation, the deepening cooperation. Yes, and also, be. yeah, I'm sorry, just one last point. Compar in comparison, if you, we remember not long ago, uh, you know, in, in the late 19th century and early 20th century, when these three countries are in war or uh, colonial colonialism was very high, uh, the, uh, there's always very bad things happening, you know, massacres and, his, uh, and wars. Comfort so women I think, in particular, yeah, in the case of women, the okay. Yeah, and, and also, you know, Nanjing massacre, all kinds of things happened. So in, you know, in contrast with this memory, we enjoy peace and pros prosperity these days. So we have to cherish that and make the foundation even uh, more consolidated in order to, uh, you know, look into the future and have more cooperations. Let me cross over to Ms. Lim, who's standing by in ROK, 
for her thoughts on the prospects of regional integration. Hello, Ms. Lim. To what degree do you think China will play a positive role in cementing the regional solidarity and, of course, economic integration, despite a very strong position from your ally, the United States? Um, as uh, Professor Wang Yi um, already explained, uh, we did have um, kind of the experience of multilateralism, regionalism, uh, which was mostly driven by uh, crisis, again, Asian financial crisis, or um, North Korea's nuclear program, or again, the global financial crisis. Um, I uh, personally don't think today's um, trilateral relation is that much serious compared to um, our past. Um, we have, again, the built a cooperative relationships, and the economic dependency, mutual dependency, has been greater and greater. Um, but the thing is, as you mentioned, the strategic calculation uh, in terms of stru strategic calculation, um, you know, we sometimes conflict. So uh, the thing is, um, probably the fundamental thing is, I think, uh, we all of the three countries really need to uh, reconstruct uh, our mutual perception. As long as we see each other as a kind of rival uh, rather than a, uh, a partner, you know, sometimes unnecessarily all these tensions go up to the, uh, again, another level. Um, so as long as, you know, we are uh, economically, mutually very, very interdependent, um, I think, um, again, the trilateral um, relationship should be and will be uh, improved further through uh, today's uh, um, summit. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done, uh, Ms. Lim, but let me uh, go over to our Japanese commentator. Hello, Professor Watanabe. Hello. Yes, um, very nice to see you again. Do you share the cautious optimism, if any, between the three leaders that uh, the economic and geopolitical scenario could be somehow improved in Chengdu? I think certainly uh, Chengdu meeting was uh, quite positive uh, to the direction of further enhancing uh, cooperation among three countries. Uh, Japan, for one, uh, Japan has already concluded uh, TPP, although the United States is not there, the TPP-11 uh, came into force about a year ago, and uh, Japan-EU uh, free trade agreement, which covers roughly 30% uh, of whole GDP of the world, uh, also uh, came into effect as of uh, February the 1st this year. So Japan is kind of leading uh, this uh, free trade uh, regime, uh, not only uh, in this region but also worldwide. So I think uh, this time, uh, you know, the uh, having uh, China and uh, Republic of Korea together with Japan, uh, we can certainly demonstrate the willingness of uh, Northeast Asian countries, um, united front uh, for fathering uh, liberal trade. Uh, and more investment, uh, not only across the region, but also uh, to the rest of the world. Let, let me ask you one question, uh, Professor Watanabe. Now, the Japanese have been left disillusioned, utterly disillusioned, by the unilateral decision of the Trump administration to retreat from a TPP, and we, three of us in Northeast Asia, seem to have ended up opting for RCEP. But again, the Japanese, uh, uh, I mean, uh, your sense of ambiguity uh, starts to capture headlines these days. So let me uh, have your thoughts to clarify sure. the Japanese position on RCEP. Okay, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting question. You know, when you uh, go back to the history, uh, that was in 2006 that Japan proposed uh, the framework of ASEAN plus six, while China had been uh, proposing ASEAN plus three. So uh, the RCEP, as it stands now, is originally a uh, Japanese proposal back in 2006. So uh, by all means, Japan has been pushing forward uh, this RCEP, the 16-country free trade area. Uh, so, um, you know, it's uh, no contradiction to uh, uh, Japan or any other countries that Japan has been promoting uh, TPP-11. Uh, TPP-11 and RCEP could be very much complementary to each other, and uh, those uh, rules which have been negotiated in the TPP-11 could be, uh, you know, fed back to the negotiations of RCEP. 
So RCEP and uh, TPP-11, there could be very active interactions in terms of uh, uh, making rules on such rules as, uh, uh, you know, the uh, rules on the state-owned enterprises and also uh, furthering uh, the market access arrangements. So uh, Japan is certainly pushing forward RCEP after completed uh, the TPP-11. So TPP-11 could be uh, further advancing, while RCEP could be the better forum for the developing countries altogether. And those developing countries who are ready to join TPP, they could uh, join the TPP later on. So there, there is a kind of sequential approach, the RCEP first and then TPP-11 later. You know, the, that, that kind of sequential approach can be, uh, can be quite reasonable. Thank you very much, Professor Watanabe. Uh, Thank Coming you. back to the Beijing studio, Dr. Zhao Hai, now, uh, with the appellate body of the WTO grinding to a halt, uh, the actual uh, meaning of the WTO has somehow lost its essence, uh, to put it this way. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the regional mechanism uh, such as RCEP or TPP, let, let's look at the RCEP, is likely to replace the WTO? And in fact, in this particular area, President Trump has made a serious mistake, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, by some of the American observers. Uh, they say, uh, uh, President Trump will make China great again. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, that may be a joke, but uh, <clears throat> yes, indeed, I think Trump may not make China great again, but definitely is not making America great again by quitting TPP or by uh, uh, just uh, you know going to bilateral means of uh, uh, dealing with the trade deal and particularly using American clout to force others to accept American terms. Uh, first thing first, I think WTO is still very much alive because other than the U.S., many other countries still committed to the WTO principle and also they're trying to um, reform the WTO to satisfy the 21st century standards. Uh, and also, uh, on top of that, regional uh, regionalism, you know, and also a regional trade agreement based on this regional uh, spirit uh, is very much welcomed by many other countries because on top of WTO, WTO is very much fundamental rules. On top of that, many countries want higher standards, higher rules, uh, because WTO is missing a couple of parts. Uh, for instance, digital economy, uh, that we wanted to uh, have more rules in, in terms of digital trade, e-commerce, so that countries can, uh, you know, have more uh, service trade in other areas. Uh, so in that respect, China is very much leading the way in terms of uh, uh, pushing RCEP over the, de the, the, the final line. Uh, and unfortunately, at this point, India is not participating. Uh, but we also uh, you know, a, a claim that uh, we recognize Japan's contribution and leadership in uh, both uh, you know, T CPTPP and, and RCEP and further pushing uh, the envelope of free trade. Uh, however, without cooperation among, uh, between J Japan and China and also among the three, you know, Japan, uh, Korea, South Korea, uh, Japan, China, uh, it's very difficult to elevate uh, the trade deal to the next level. So I think at this point, the core uh, or the key uh, words is still very, very much cooperation and understanding of each other's position uh, so that, you know, uh, this unilateralism will be much more helpful uh, uh, instead of uh, unilateralism now uh, committed by the United States. China? Japan and ROK account for 24% of the world economic total. So what do you think of uh, uh, the uh, understatement of uh, uniting the three major giants in Northeast Asia? True. I'm not sure whether the, uh, sort of the rationale uh, behind that uh, uh, RC, I'm sorry, excuse me, yeah, uh, trilateral cooperation China, Japan and ROK is meant to undermine U.S. <coughs> leadership. I think if it is the case, uh, if it's a, what we are talking about, the reimagine or reconstitute the next decade uh, of trilateral cooperation, I'm, I don't think it will be possible. So we have to recognize, we have to understand that uh, Japan and uh, ROK are uh, allies, close allies of the United States, and they were certainly United States would never uh, want that to happen, and I don't think. Uh, Japan and ROK would like to that happen. Having said that, I would say I would say that uh, it is true as uh, the U.S. is now in terms of trade negotiations, trade talks, it's pursuing single-handedly is a kind of so-called bilateralism and America first. 
and uh, regardless of its allies or not. And Japan and the United uh, and ROK have been suffered from that, has been strongly feel that they need to have more leverage, more to more options. I think this, that's number one. Number two, the three countries, China, Japan, and and uh, ROK, having integrated, having uh, sort of uh, uh, developed under uh, this kind of same uh, uh, incre increasingly close uh, 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 regional or global uh, value chain, they now all feel the need to upgrade, to, 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 to deepen that cooperation because uh, there's uh, Japan is certainly, I think, is leading in many ways, uh, particularly in high tech and innovation. South Korea is catching up, um, having you know, taken over the relatively in the middle, and China is also catching up. So there are more uh, sort of areas and more issues the three countries need to work together, need to, to work together. And the, uh, uh, the, uh, at the regional level, the, that's where we, the RCP is, and the ASEAN also would like to work together with the three countries. So we have the so-called 10 plus 3, that's the Chinese initiative, and the 10 plus 6, uh, that is the Japanese initiative, now later on it's emerged. And we also have even a cross-Pacific uh, if I say TPP initiate. So all these are kind of uh, initiative, all these kind of range are competing or complementing each other. You sound like how a play with the Maja, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, all depends on how we can, whether we are able to see the bigger picture and whether we are able to manage the differences or uh, competition. So I think the most important takeaway for me is that the three agreed, uh, committed to have better and more coordination than competition. We'll be coming back after this break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Let me go back to Ms. Lim. Uh, you know, the Supreme Leader threatens to give a Christmas gift to the United States. Uh, I'd like to know what kind of gift he would present to Washington on Christmas Eve. Well, I hope um, Mr. Chairman, again, the Kim Jong-un, um, can give us a pleasant <laughs> gift rather than a shocking gift. Um, well, we'll see. I mean, uh, I don't want to, of course, uh, nobody, nobody uh, wants to see um, any of that kind of, you know, further provocation um, made by the uh, North Korea. But the thing is, again, the deadline determined by themselves is approaching. Um, by again at the end of um, this year, um, they kept urging again Washington and other party uh, to show something preemptively, right? Sh show something first, uh, to uh, not to again not to escalate into another level. Um, I know we um, all like uh, face in this kind of stalemate um, situations. Uh, stalemate of the dialogue between Washington and Pyongyang. Um, for example, Mr. Began uh, visited uh, Seoul too, but you know there is no uh, kind of visible uh, progress um, between the Pyongyang and uh, Mr. Began. So we are disappointed. Um, but the thing is uh, that is why I also want to emphasize uh, again the Beijing's leadership is now really uh, important again. It has been always important, but I think um, it's need to be uh, re-emphasized again. And Beijing uh, absolutely, I think, uh, need to uh, persuade the North Korea. At the same time, uh, I hope again the Beijing can lead the uh, multilateral dialogues uh, with the Seoul and Tokyo and even with the Washington, hopefully uh, with the Russia's um, Moscow too. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Let me go back to Professor Watanabe. Uh, when uh, Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi uh, met with uh, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, he said the bilateral relationship between Tokyo and Beijing is back on track. And given the, uh, the, the, the fact that the, the next year, 2020, uh, has been designated as the year of a China-Japan cultural and sports exchange promotion, what do you make of the prospects of having a positive and healthy development of these most, this most important bilateral tie in Northeast Asia and indeed in the uh, broad region of the uh, uh, India Pacific region? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, certainly uh, China Japan relations is the most important uh, element of, for the stability of uh, this region of uh, 
uh, East Asia. And so in that light, uh, the last uh, May, May last year, uh, Mr. Li Keqin, uh, the Prime Minister of China, came to Japan and uh, he had a, a quite long talk with our Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And since then, uh, Japan-China relations have been constantly improved. And uh, I think we have to further forge and consolidate uh, this kind of positive uh, element. Uh, and um, uh, particularly, uh, you know, the uh, making of uh, a trilateral FTA or further enhancing RCEP process, um, you know, the, without having Japan-China uh, good relations, it is not possible to realize. So, in this sense, I think, um, you know, the Japan and China should work together to move ahead, with both in the uh, trilateral FTA as well as RCEP. Uh, those two key countries have uh, really uh, very heavy responsibility. Uh, this has been already uh, mentioned in the summit talks that have been held yesterday uh, between uh, Mr. Abe and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Xi Jinping uh, in Beijing. So I think the, uh, the uh, process is moving forward. Atmosphere has been uh, quite improved. I think uh, we have to <coughs> move ahead uh, with uh, uh, you know, quite a determined sort of mind to improve. Uh, our bilateral relations for the sake of the region of Northeast Asia and also for the rest of the world. Mr. Lim, uh, Huawei has been singled out always by policymakers in the United States to impose pressure on allies. So, what, where does our case stand? And the same question goes to Professor Watanabe. Where does Japan stand on the issue of Huawei? Yes, U.S.-China rivalry, uh, it's, um, it's now very much multi-dimensional. Multi uh, you know, for example, um, in, the, in the era of Cold War, the U.S.-Soviet rivalry, uh, that was much more about uh, you know, nuclear weapons. Uh, how many you know warheads do you have? So that kind of you know uh, kind of prisoner's dilemma, like the situations has continued in the in the era of Cold War. But today's U.S.-China rivalry is much more complicating than uh, the U.S.-Soviet uh, rivalry, which makes really South Korea's position difficult, uh, very unfortunately. Um, if Huawei or 5G, uh, all this like a new technology-related uh, domain. Uh, became a, a new arena, new arena uh, for the two party um, to grab uh, again um, the power, right? The, the global power. Um, so both, I think, uh, both um, China and the United States, especially the United States, really wants to um, make the rules, uh, make the rules in the new domain. Again, the technology related the domain. Um, again, which makes um, South Korea's position, South Korea's business, uh, all those things really um, again the difficult. What do you think of the process of denuclearization in the Korean Peninsula? Uh, it seems uh, that uh, Chairman Kim Jong Un feels that he's been ignored by President Trump. He he, he started to uh, create set, uh, headlines and uh, uh, trying obviously to bring back the attention. Uh, what does he want? Well, the uh, denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula is a kind of a commitment, and actually it's a kind of consensus. I mean, that uh, uh, Chairman King uh, and President Trump uh, agreed uh, at the, uh, on the Singapore uh, summit, and this is, I think, uh, being accepted and welcomed by the countries in the region, including China, Japan, and South Korea, and the world at large, and that I think. At so far, nobody said this is a bad commitment, this is a bad agreement. Everybody said we have to, and they are encouraging these two parties directly concerned to commit, continue to I mean, uh, uh, uphold that commitment. The problem we are having now is one, I think there are doubts, I see you are shaking hands, whether com I mean, complete denuclearization is possible. My answer is possible, but it is going to be a process, a long process, and it is going to be achieved as the Chinese and uh, uh, advocated are going to be in a gradual, uh, incremental, but step-by-step -step way. For that, we need a roadmap. 
That roadmap is being worked out. And the most important thing is that when you have a roadmap, you need to get committed to that roadmap. I think the problem we are having as we in the danger at coming to the end of a year, talking about speculating what kind of Christmas gift and so on and so forth, is that we seems that we at we looking at the this process, we are we are we are worrying that I mean the the the, 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 the either the, the Korean side DPRK or the United States uh, would the, I mean go back to the old cycle, the vicious circle again. I think Yes, the situation is very dangerous, it's difficult, but we should not lose hope. The Chinese and the, uh, and the Russians have put forward a draft proposal at the UN Security Council advocating a partial lift of the sanctions. That would, I feel, that would help kickstart the process. Unfortunately, they're running out of time, and we'll see that uh, whether the cycle would go again. This is really bad. The, the trilateral meeting, I think it is very timely at this moment. It Dr. Zhao, uh, to, uh, to put it more uh, succinctly, and <coughs> the conclusion uh, is being nuclear armed, and there's nothing we can do seriously to uh, uh, denuclearize. Well, she's better not. Uh, I don't think any country in this world currently wanted to recognize North Korea as a nuclear state. And uh, the aim for all the, other, all the countries in the region are to have a nuclear free uh, Korean peninsula. So ultimately, uh, we all agree that uh, we wanted to have no nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. We, ha we want to have a peaceful and successful and prosperous Korean penins Peninsula, which is uh, very good for all the interests around this region and all the other countries. And right now, I think two things preventing this from coming to uh, coming into being. <coughs> One is American domestic politics. Uh, if Trump is successful in dealing with North Korea, then uh, he will be, you know, running into a wall by domestic politics, and if he's failed, of course, it's going to be, going to be uh, celebrated by his opponents domestically. With that, we come to the end of this uh, program, and again, Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs>